right? So this is the Mavic 3 Pro. And a lot of times when we do these new releases, I say that there's a lot that we need to discuss and unpack. But with this, there's really only one thing we need to talk about. Well, maybe three things. Let's get started. Now, if you're somebody who waited for the Mavic 3, this, the Mavic 3 Pro, is what you were waiting for and what you hoped for that DJI would have released first. But now here it is, months later, we have the completed and finalized version of the Mavic 3 in the Pro version. So today I wanna go through the video like I always do, but it's not going to be as lengthy or as long because there's not a lot to talk about. It's easier for me to tell you what has changed than what's stayed the same because realistically, there's only like two things that have changed on the Pro version that I think will ultimately affect you in your decision making. So with that being said, let's just jump right into the camera specs. All right, so Mavic 3 Pro cameras. So just like on the standard Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic, we have the wide angle micro four thirds sensor. Nothing's changed there. We have the Explorer lens, which is that 166 millimeter equivalent, which is essentially seven times, which the optics on that have improved ever so slightly. And then now we have something new, which is this three times optical zoom for a 70 millimeter equivalent. Now this is the starlight feature and is going to be the reason why you would essentially think about purchasing a Mavic 3 Pro. That 70 millimeter lens allows you to isolate subjects and really put focus on something that you're photographing or videoing. I think this is the first time I've ever really prioritized photo first in a review, but I've been using this for the past two months on real estate listings. And I have to say it's given me an added dynamic and the ability to showcase homes and subjects a little bit differently for my clients. And it's something that you all have asked me that I haven't been able to talk about because this drone wasn't released yet. But now that it is, I can tell you that most of the shots that you were seeing were from the Mavic 3 Pro. All right, so I know a lot of people that were paying attention to some of the leaks thought that we were gonna have all these wildly different specs from the original Mavic 3, but the reality is we don't. The specs are mostly still the same. However, DJI did go ahead and add one additional color profile to the Mavic 3 Pro, which is D-Log M. Now, D-Log M makes it a lot easier to color grade it doesn't have quite as much dynamic range as D-Log, but you're still getting more dynamic range than the standard Hasselblad color in the most harsh lighting conditions. I found the D-Log M to be a welcome addition, and I ended up filming quite a bit of that down here in downtown Tampa, just because it's easy for me to match it up to my FX3, while the Hasselblad color works fantastic if you're looking for quick edits. If you're not ready to jump to full D-Log, I would definitely recommend trying D-Log M. So it's nice to see that back here on the Mavic 3. It was on the Mavic 2 Pro, and then they went ahead and brought it back here on the Mavic 3. So pretty cool stuff. All right, let's go ahead and just jump into some camera comparisons because I think that's what you really care about most of all.
Alrighty, so for the vast majority of those clips, they were filmed 5K, 30 frames per second in the standard Hasselblad color. Only a few of those clips notated down at the bottom were filmed in the log profile. And the whole reason behind that is I just wanted to show you from sort of an average Joe perspective what this can, uh, camera could essentially do. Even though this says Pro, some people just want to have the best possible camera they can, even though they have no intention of doing Pro work. I had a great time being able to film super close in the cities. Spoiler alert, I am a nervous flyer. Downtown Tampa, I try to be as safe as possible. I don't want to get all the way into the city and have this drone over traffic and people. So having a lens that can compete with the main shooter is really nice. And it makes it a little bit safer so you can keep the drone at a distance while still getting some of those shots that most would think would be super risky, but yet you were so far away. And I think that was the big takeaway that I, that I had being in Salt Lake City. I didn't know that city. I've never flown there before. I don't know the air traffic. I don't know where choppers were. So I wanted to keep the drone relatively close. And the uh, three times definitely let me do that. Now, if I felt like I needed more, obviously the seven times was available and it was functional, but you're still, you're getting such amazing quality at a three times camera for photo and video. Where the three times sort of lacks is in hyperlapses because you're at such a longer focal length. Sometimes you will get some camera shake that needs to be stabilized when you're doing time lapses. So that's something you wanna be mindful of. But obviously the main shooter works perfectly fine. You can use that wide angle micro four thirds lens if you plan on doing hyper lapses. And then you can just sort of crop in on it because you have a lot more resolution when doing so. So now I just wanna talk a little bit about, you know, how I flew this. I have the RC Pro that came with this. This is going to have the RC Pro, the DJI RC as a base combo. So if you're you know, you're wanting to have a screen, you have this option. You also have the gray RC that has the built-in screen available, which works fantastic. I've just grown so accustomed to using the RC Pro that it just goes everywhere with me on my travels. I did get the Fly More combo, so it came with three batteries. The batteries are transferable from the Mavic Pro to the Mavic 3. So if you already have a Mavic 3 or you already picked up batteries for some odd reason, you can just go ahead and use these with the Mavic 3 Pro. Now, one other thing I wanna make mention of, the Pro, at least the Fly More combo came with the new 100 watt or the 99 watt charger, the big, the brick that I showcased in the Enterprise review. This came with that, so you can essentially charge two sets of batteries simultaneously, which is pretty darn cool. Or you can just plug it up to your RC Pro and get maximum wattage in the charging aspect. So pretty great stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and keep putting up some more comparison footage because there is also one more cool thing that is coming to the Mavic 3 lineup that I think many of you will be excited for. So coming soon, you'll be able to use your Motion RC, and I'm not sure if it's Motion RC2 or just Motion Controller, I'm not 100% sure. I'll be sure to leave details with the clarification down below. But the big takeaway is, you'll be able to use the Goggles 2 with the DJI Mavic 3 and Mini 3 lineup. So if you've been wanting to use FPV goggles, you'll be able to do it. Now these are the Goggles 2 Integra, but it will work with the Goggles 2 as well. Not 100% sure on the V2. I didn't get enough clarification on that. But again, I'll be sure to include all the key details that you need down in the description below. So be sure you read that so you can check it out. And also stay tuned to DJI's official page for update information.
All right, that's gonna do it for this video first look of the Mavic 3 Pro. Personally, I think the footage looks amazing coming out of this camera, but I'd love to know what you think about it. Also, I do wanna to talk to those of you that bought the Mavic 3 when it first came out. Don't feel like you have to be the one that runs out and buys this just because this is something new. There's still nothing wrong with the Mavic 3 Classic or the Mavic 3. The Pro just has that added lens and it's really fantastic, but it's not an absolute need. So if you're somebody who's happy with your Mavic 3, you should still be happy with it today, even though the Pro came out. Personally, I am gonna be switching to the Mavic 3 Pro because it does help me with real estate photography, being able to isolate subjects a little bit easier, and it does give me added perspective. Something that I think is super underrated in the tech world or in the camera industry is that we focus so much on cameras, we don't focus enough on lenses. So anytime a drone can give you three different options, I'm absolutely going to take that. But anyways, there'll be links down below if you wanna check this out for yourself. I'll also include a Google Drive link where you can download the raw files, some of the raw files, because there are a lot of them. So you can check it out and see if the quality lives up to your expectations. I'll see you in the next video. Stay original.